The Huawei Mate 10 series is all about promises. The promise of AI in your smartphone, the promise of a rising star in the industry, and the promise of a better long-term future for your device. Huawei has been hot on the heels of Samsung for many years now, slowly increasing its global market and its Western mind share. In fact, it's no stretch to say that Huawei, rather than Samsung, is now the premier innovator in the smartphone space. Enter the Huawei Mate 10 series, a very promising example of where Huawei is headed. Huawei is essentially marketing these phones around four main selling points. The display, the camera, battery, and AI-based performance. The display is the first point of difference between the two phones. Both comprise metal frames sandwiched between sheets of Gorilla Glass with Huawei's new signature stripe highlighting the dual Leica engineered cameras. They're a departure from Huawei's typical metal phones, but they fall in line with the current 2017 flagship trend, albeit without the addition of wireless charging. On the upside, you now have a place to store your fingerprint collection. The Mate 10 Pro is the more expensive version, with an 18 to 9 aspect ratio OLED display and up to 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. The Mate 10 sticks with an IPS LCD at 16 to 9 resolution, with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. While the Mate 10's dual SIM slot can be used for microSD expansion, the Pro version only supports dual SIM. Both models have HDR10 displays, and while there's still not too much mobile HDR content around right now, there will be over the lifetime of these phones. Both panels hit 730 nits in brightness, but the Mate 10 Pro's OLED panel produces punchier colours and wider whites. For some reason, Huawei chose to put a Full HD Plus resolution panel on the Pro version while the regular Mate 10 gets a Quad HD panel, meaning the regular Mate 10 has higher pixel density, but unless Quad HD is really important to you, you won't be disappointed by the Pro version's panel. Plus, the combination of a brand new 10 nanometer chipset, AI battery management, an OLED display with a black theme, and lower resolution means if you're all about battery life, you can squeeze even more battery out of the Pro version. On my best day, I managed to hit around 6 hours of screen on time while I was inside and had the brightness set to around 40%. Obviously, your mileage may vary depending on how you use your phone and how bright you have your screen, but that number generally hovers around 4-5 to five hours. Speaking of the battery, both units come with a 4000mAh cell with Huawei Supercharge. With the phone turned off, you can charge a third of the battery in 15 minutes, a little over half in half an hour, and around 85-90% to 90 in a full 60 minutes. Huawei has taken Samsung's misfortunes to heart and has stepped up its battery safety as well, having its fast charging solution certified by TUV Rhineland. The battery is also the first place we see AI on the Mate 10. AI powered battery management promises the world, much like Huawei's born fast stay fast mantra. But like that performance over time promise, you're going to have to wait until the Huawei Mate 10 learns all of your habits. Only then can it better allocate resources to eke out more battery life for your particular style of usage. Of course, this will only happen, or not, long after you've dropped your cash on it. But history has shown that Huawei's combination of a large battery, great fast charging and solid battery management means the Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro will likely be among the best battery performers of the year. Now as you may have guessed, AI plays a pretty big part in the performance of the Mate 10 too. The Kirin 970 chipset has a dedicated neural processing unit that handles complex processing tasks on device rather than in the cloud. But it must be noted that AI has a prominent but limited place on the Mate 10. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's pure marketing, but the benefits of AI and the NPU will only really be felt over time, as there are precious few features using their full capabilities right now. Huawei assures me that more will be delivered over time, not held off until the next device in the series. Google Translate will soon join Microsoft's Translate app, which uses the NPU for near-instant photo-based translation. And the 13 objects and scenes the camera can currently recognize to automatically adjust settings will increase as the NPU image database expands. Google's AR Core will arrive via an update later this year, and the neural network APIs are coming next year. The Kirin 970 is also being positioned as an open AI platform for developers, meaning further applications to tap its full potential are sure to arrive in time. But for now, the NPU and AI kind of sit in the background, speeding up some parts of the experience, slowly learning your habits, suggesting smart tips based on context awareness, and generally just promising more benefits in future. I primarily used the Mate 10 Pro during this review and found the experience to be reliably fast, if not light years ahead as the AI promise might have you believe. I experienced the usual stutters and glitches common to any phone and had a few issues with Google Apps playing nice with EMUI. The Mate 10s run Android 8.0 Oreo out of the box, with EMUI 8 on top. Several Oreo features are on board, like notification dots, launcher app shortcuts, smart text selection and picture-in-picture -picture mode, but Huawei can't exactly be relied upon for the most faithful implementation of Google features, and several others don't make it at all, including adaptive icons and notification channels. 
Fortunately, Oreo brings with it the promise of Project Treble, meaning that updates in the future shouldn't be as sluggish as they have been in Huawei's past. Huawei has even said as much, with two years of guaranteed updates and at least one major Android version bump. As always, Huawei, like the Samsung of old, makes up for it by loading on more software features than you can poke a stick at. Perhaps the biggest ticket feature on the Mate 10, and a big middle finger to Samsung, is a dockless desktop mode. You just need a USB Type-C to HDMI cable with DisplayPort support, and you can plug your phone directly into a monitor. Oreo lets you attach various peripherals like a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, or you can use the phone as a kind of trackpad to get you through a presentation. It's a little sluggish, but it works. Any calls or messages that come in while in desktop mode will still be handled by the phone and not show up on screen to maintain your privacy. It's a little weird to get used to, but a handy option to have, and it'll be interesting to see where this kind of functionality goes in future. Other software features include smart split screen, so if you're watching a video or playing a game and a message comes in, the Mate 10 will let you jump into split screen mode so you can do two things at once. Now if snooping is an issue for you, you can register a fingerprint which accesses a whole other version of your phone. That way you can keep your dirty secret secret by unlocking your phone with your clean finger or pattern. A floating navigation dock lets you open up all that screen real estate by using a floating bubble that works much like fingerprint scanner gestures to control navigation without the usual on-screen buttons. Now I could go on endlessly about the specifics of Huawei software features, but if you want to read the full review, head on down to the video description, because now I want to move on to the camera, which I firmly believe is the most impressive part of the Mate 10 series. Two f1.6 Summerlux H lenses sit on the back of both Mate 10s, a 20 megapixel monochrome sensor and a 12 megapixel RGB sensor. Four-way autofocus is very reliable, and OIS on the RGB lens helps with image stabilization, especially in low-light conditions. I found the photos out of the Mate 10 to be generally very good. While you could get some impressive shots out of the Mate 9 if you were using full manual controls, the Mate 10 offers the same level of quality but in auto mode, bringing Huawei's photography potential mainstream. Low-light photography especially was impressive, with very little noise or visible grain. It has to be noted though that the Mate 10 tends to crush blacks in its attempt to stamp out noise altogether, making most nighttime photos look good, but visibly darker than the actual scene. Depending on how you feel about noise versus overall lightness, you'll either love or hate Huawei's approach here. Other phones like the Pixel 2 try really hard to lighten the scene, but tend to add much more noise than you'll find on the Mate 10. Some of this no doubt has to do with the AI scene recognition, which you can thankfully override, but only by using the manual controls or choosing another preset like HDR, which is not an ideal solution if you don't like the AI-assisted results. A simple toggle in the camera app for disabling AI scene recognition would be a much better idea. But AI in the camera is not all bad though. AI motion detection means capturing moving subjects without blur is quite easy, with the Mate 10 able to capture action shots without any visible movement, even in pretty poor lighting. The scene recognition works very reliably too, automatically adjusting settings to best capture the subject or scene. It'll just depend on whether you agree with the AI or not on what constitutes the best settings. The only real problem I had with the Mate 10 camera was over sharpening. The sharpening in some shots tends to make the result look too fake. Take this dog photo, where everything is a little too sharpened to look lifelike. Then there's this one, where everything pans out perfectly. This kind of variability is emblematic of the Mate 10 camera performance for me. Multiple shots taken one after the other can often produce very different results. In HDR mode 2, the HDR version would occasionally lighten the shadows as you'd expect it to, but in others it would produce darker shadows than the original shot. You'll always get at least one photo that is fantastic, but I definitely recommend always firing off a couple just to be sure. In good lighting, the Mate 10 shoots great shots like any other high-end smartphone. The monochrome sensor doesn't always seem to provide that much extra detail though, making me wonder how much more fun the Mate 10 camera could be if it had a wide-angle lens like the LG V30, or a 2x zoom lens like the Note 8. AI also helps provide a 2x hybrid zoom, which produces results a lot more like those you'd find on the Pixel, with more noise, but a lighter palette and more detail in the shadows. It definitely produces better detail than a cropped-in standard shot. Portrait mode is very reliable, if not perfect, and wide aperture mode has improved since the Mate 9 II. Both understandably look a little fake, but are perfectly good for a new profile pic or social share. If Huawei's cameras put you off in the past for being too complicated, the Mate 10 rectifies that situation, bringing very impressive results to a point-and-shoot audience. There's a little bit of character to the Mate 10 camera that you'll have to learn to love, but if that doesn't put you off, then it's a very capable shooter. There's a whole laundry list of other firsts and improvements on the Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro, from dual 4G voiceover LTE and Cat18 LTE, to AI voice recognition and noise cancellation in calls. Both devices have stereo speakers, courtesy of a bottom firing grille and the earpiece speaker, but at max volume, which hits around 80 decibels, the sound gets too tinny for my liking, especially from the earpiece, and the headphone experience is much better. 
Support for lossless 32-bit audio at 384kHz is a nice touch of overkill, but the presence of high-end codecs in Oreo will not be enough to satisfy potential Mate 10 Pro buyers who prefer wired headphones. Fortunately, you can always use the included Type-C earbuds, or live the dongle life and enjoy Huawei's audio tuning on your favourite set of cans. Water resistance, QHD panels, headphone ports and microSD expansion are the stalwarts of smartphone shopping, but by mixing and matching features so randomly, there's no obvious winner here. At €699, Euros, the Mate 10 has all the regular bases covered, but at €799, Euros, the Mate 10 Pro is in some ways superior, while in other ways not as feature rich. It'll be the only version to make it to the US though, with local pricing and availability coming soon. Despite a few questionable choices, the Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro are really nice phones, and while they may not yet be meeting Samsung head-to-head, -head, they're a positive step in that direction. If Huawei manages to come through on any or even all of the promises it's made with the Mate 10 series, then they're guaranteed to get better over time. As always, thank you so much for watching. Just hit that link in the video description if you want more details on either device, and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for upload notifications, because we are your source for all things Android.